Hello, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful introductory video to meet one of the newest members of our Sourceable team out of Ireland, Mel. Uh, so excited to meet you. My name is John Bryson. I'm the Learning and Development Director here at Rangum, and really looking forward to asking you some great questions and giving our audience an opportunity to get to know you. So I thought we would start with just a simple one. Can you tell us about your role at Rangum? Yeah, of course. So um, as you just said, I am Irish. I think I'm Rangham's first um, Irish employee and I just actually joined Rangham a month ago. Um, so I'm quite new. I'm still kind of getting into the swing of things. But um, my official title is EMEA Project Coordinator, which I know sounds like really fancy, but really it, it just means I do a bit of everything, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of breadth to my role, which I really love because it means that I, like my work spans over so many different cogs in the Rangham machine. I suppose the bread and butter of my role is outreach and forging partnerships with employers and talent providers who are, I suppose, interested in hiring disabled or neurodivergent talent. I also work really closely with any employers that we do get on board to build up a program that's tailored to whatever it is that they want to get out of their partnership with us, whether that's a full blown program or a looser partnership with a few specific roles in mind. I also work with job seekers who sign up with us to understand, I suppose, what they're looking for and try to match them with any opportunities our partners have that speaks to their interests and skill set, which I really enjoy. I just I love to chat. So it's great to get to know our candidates. Um, another thing I kind of do on the side is I coordinate our marketing activities and ensure that any roles that we do have going is marketed effectively to our clients. Um, to be completely honest, I'm still wrapping my head around the full breadth of what my role encompasses, but um, that's basically what I've been doing to date. And I've honestly found it incredibly invigorating. Like I still have to just take a moment every now and then just to appreciate how incredibly lucky I am that I'm getting to do what I love and I'm genuinely passionate about. Well, we are so lucky to have you and it sounds like what you're going to be contributing to the team is going to have a tremendous impact not just on us as a team but on individuals so thank you so much so what originally made you want to work for rangam ah um, the million dollar question well um as it happens i've a great deal of personal background in diversity and inclusion um just from my own lived experience as i'm actually neurodivergent myself i was saying to you just before we started the call that i'm as neurodivergent as they come um i was diagnosed with autism and dyspraxia when i was uh, six years old which you know at that time was very unusual um you know like to get a diagnosis that early um at all was really rare back then and as a girl was pretty much unheard of so I was incredibly fortunate but I, I suppose I did have the double-edged sword experience of growing up knowing that I was neurodivergent because I suppose on the one hand it's a great privilege because I was able to access the supports that I needed from you know quite an early age but I think on the other hand it also meant that I was aware of how prejudiced the world can be for you know no good reason a lot of the time against people who choose to embrace the label of autistic and I know that like one trait that's really common in autistic people that I personally consider to be very integral to my own values is that we have a really keen sense of justice or injustice as well so you can imagine my indignation when I found out that 85 percent of, of autistic people in Ireland are either unemployed or underemployed that is an absolutely outrageous statistic to me and it, it, it makes me both furious and really passionate to do something about that especially when I know that we're such a capable community when we're given half the chance so I mean I've always wanted to do battle with this figure in whatever way I can so I mean up until recently I'd kind of been doing that in a more grassroots type of way through self-advocacy and I suppose just speaking at diversity and inclusion events and of course, that's great and everything, but I suppose it doesn't feel particularly satisfying because you're not really seeing the end effect. And I don't know, it just never really felt like it was enough. And I was always just super eager to do more and really put my passion for this issue to good use and, you know, do something that gets a tangible impact, I suppose. So it was right around then that I first got to know Rangham and, you know, our incredible founders, Nish and Hettel. I was lucky enough to meet them a few years ago in Ireland. 
um, I was absolutely bowled up, uh, bowled over by the work that Rangham does and how like, I, like what really struck me is just how non lip servicey Rangham's core values felt to me, like even right down to Rangham's own internal hiring practices being quite disability friendly and you know, I had a pleasant discovery when I first started that my entire team just so happened to be neurodivergent. I didn't think that would be something I'd ever be fortunate enough to have in my uh, career. Um, but, you know, not everyone gets to work at, at something that they're dispassionate about. So, you know, as I was saying earlier, I still can't really believe my luck that Rangham came along at just the right time for me. I feel the same way. And as a neurodivergent person myself, I want to thank you so much for how publicly and openly you share your experience, your, your lived experience. Uh, and, and that's one of the things I value about this team too, is, is seeing the, the way neurodiversity is not just a talking point, but is truly a core value. So I'm so glad that you see that and that you feel it. And uh, just so excited that we are able to be our true authentic selves at work. So thank you so, so much for sharing that. Um, so being on this team, I know you're relatively new, but you probably had a little bit of information about this before. What do you think sets the source building um, program apart from other inclusive hiring programs that you know of that currently exist? Yeah, so I suppose, as I just said, you know, I did have the privilege of being formally diagnosed as autistic and dyspraxic at a very young age. And like I said, that that was pretty rare at the time. And even though we are seeing a gradual uptick in diagnoses in the decades that have passed since my own diagnosis, there are still so many barriers to getting a formal assessment, you know, whether that's long waiting lists or like, you know, the exorbitant cost to even like get an assessment if you want to go the private route and skip the queue. And it's just not feasible for so many people. So that's why I'm incredibly proud that SourceAble differentiates itself from other hiring programs in that it allows self-identified neurodivergent candidates who, for whatever reason, you know, didn't or couldn't get a formal diagnosis to sign up. And, you know, we will never ask someone to provide proof of diagnosis because, um, you know, that's a very invalidating thing to ask of someone. And, you know, I, I, I do understand why not every hiring program does that, but I think the way that we do things ensures that we actually reach a pool of candidates that are truly representative of the neurodivergent population. And it ensures that we're catching the more underrepresented groups who are like all too often are slipping through the cracks, you know, such as autistic women or even older demographics who are neurodivergent up in a time when the concept of neurodiversity just didn't exist in public consciousness. And, you know, actually, I was looking at my um, at our candidate and I suppose statistics and demographics there just this morning. And actually, as of right now, I can proudly say that 42 percent of the job seekers that signed up with us in SourceAbled on and um, SourceAbled UK, I should say, at the minute are women, which, you know, is when you think about in terms of diagnoses, only I think one in five currently of diagnosed autistic people are women, but we know that women face such barriers to diagnoses. So I think this is much more representative of reality when it comes to neurodiversity. And I don't have the exact figure to hand, but I know that a lot of candidates I've personally talked to in the registration process are 40 plus as well. So I think we're getting true representation there. And I really do think that this level of equal opportunity and I suppose not gatekeeping the validity of people's neurodiversity is what really sets SourceAbled apart and shows that we actually practice what we preach. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I love that that you, you dug into the figures. I really appreciate that. Oh, I, I'm a stats nerd. <laughs> Self I love that. That's <laughs> one of the great things about our team is that we all bring something different to the table. And because of that, we we share yeah. those strengths and it just makes us a better team. Yes. I love that. Born in the game. <laughs> so how, do, how can our SourceAble program support employers to recruit inclusive and diverse talent? What do you think? Well, um, I think a lot of us can appreciate that like you know by now that the untapped talent of this of you know disabled nor divergent workers or just any workers with additional needs is the recruitment industry's best kept secret and now that i think employers are increasingly starting to arrive at this realization themselves and starting to wise up to this untapped talent pipeline that has huge potential we're you know we're here to help them in their inclusivity journey um so I kind of touched on this earlier, but we work with our partner companies to develop tailored programs that are geared towards inclusive hiring and, 
you know, we we really work to make this bespoke to what the individual employer wants to get out of it in terms of reach, outcomes, whatever it is that they want to get out of the partnership. We work with them to make this a reality. Um, we not only match our registered candidates to roles, but we also offer concierge services, which again sounds fancy, but it's really just a fancy word for job coaching post hire. So it really is a holistic package that we offer employers. And, you know, we ensure that we're not that they're not only equipped to hire disabled talent, but also that they're able to support them in role and, you know, setting them up for success right from the get go. We just we don't just abandon them the second that they've you know, been onboarded. It's really a great service, I think. And I think the benefits are only getting better as we continue to grow. Totally agree. Absolutely. OK, so um, how how can our source table program benefit job seekers and industry colleagues that support job seekers um, to secure work? I know that you talked a lot about connections you've been having and that you love having these conversations. So what's, what's your thought on that? For sure, it's one of my favorite parts of the role, really. But I suppose like even coming like we're all about empathy at Rangham and even coming from my own perspective, I only graduated a few years ago myself. So just putting myself in the shoes of job seekers as an autistic job seeker myself, I know that after my graduation, one of my biggest concerns was finding an employer that was, you know, genuinely inclusive and I suppose willing to accommodate me as a neurodivergent person. And like that's getting even harder to discern with the recent trends in diversity and inclusion, because I think, you know, nowadays pretty much every company now has a standard throwaway line on their website about how committed they are to diversity and inclusion. So it's it's really hard to tell who actually means it. But one of the great benefits, I think, of signing up for Sourceabled is that we work with employers who are actively interested in disabled or neurodivergent talent. And not just because it's the right thing to do, but because they can see that it's just playing good business sense to have a diversity of perspectives in your workforce. And, you know, to reflect diversity of your clientele, because, you know, we're not all the same in society. We're not uniform and we need different ways of thinking. It's something that's natural and conducive to better results. So, you know, once a job seeker has been matched to a role, we're able to support them in giving an interview or preparing for an interview, I should say, and getting a sense of what accommodations would help them succeed in securing the role. And then working obviously with the hiring manager to bring these adjustments to life and to give each candidate a fighting chance to thrive in settings that they may previously have struggled in, you know, with the absence of accommodations that they need. I mean, the classic thing when it comes to autism is that autistic people are quote unquote bad at interviews and that's simply not the case a lot of the time. They just need particular accommodations like, you know, perhaps they shouldn't be expected to make as much eye contact as may be expected in these situations, or it might be something about clothing, or it might be getting getting some of the questions in advance so they have a chance to prepare. Whatever it is that they need, um, we can work with the hiring manager and see what's feasible. Our services are absolutely free of charge, and well, to job seekers, and even if they do end up getting matched to a role, um, it's still completely free. There's no cost to the job seeker. And, you know, it is worth mentioning that signing up for Sourceabled does not by any means mean you're guaranteed a job. But at the same time, it's a superb tool, I think, in your job seeking journey. And, you know, you've absolutely nothing to lose by signing up. So I would definitely encourage anyone on the fence about it to do so. I love that. And one of the things I love based on what you just said is that um, the services we have, we offered, aren't something that talent have to pay for. Mm. But our business clients are investing in those supports. And I just think that's such a, a you know, a, an yeah. important aspect of what Very we do that, that our clients are are uh, investing in making sure people have the support and and uh, are able to be their true authentic selves. And that's just that's just critical. So, yeah, and it shows, it shows they're serious and that they're genuine yeah. about it if they're willing to invest in, in it and, you know, put funds into it then yeah. it just goes to show they're putting their money where their mouth is and that they really Absolutely. do mean to include you. And I mean, like, that's not to say they'll get it right immediately because everything has to be tailored to the individual. Um, yeah. But what's really important is that they're willing to have a conversation about it and to evolve. <laughs> All right, so we're we're coming to the end of, of our time meeting you, and I, I was hoping that could you tell us one interesting thing about yourself that you'd like to share? 
maybe a hobby or uh, an interest of yours? Um, I'm a big fan of travel and it's really funny because I only got my first passport when I was 16, which is a funny fact about me that not a lot of people know. Um, I came from like a classic farming family where we don't, um, where we weren't able to get away very often. So when I finally did get my passport, I've kind of been just traveling a lot ever since. I've never left Europe, but I hopefully I'll make it to the States someday. Um, yeah, um, I, I love horse riding, if um, to talk about hobbies. Um, I come from a very horsey family, so um, it's in the blood. But um, yeah, I think that's probably as interesting as it gets. Me. Yeah, well, that's that's that is probably the, as interesting as it gets. I, I wish that I could say I, I just I got a passport when I was sixteen. <laughs> well, I I, I just I want to say before we we part that that you know for all of you who may not uh, be familiar with it, we use the term neurodivergent and neurodiversity quite a bit on this conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, Mel and I both are neurodivergent, and so at its core, neurodiversity is this idea that in our big human family differences in how we think, feel, perceive, create, ideate, express ourselves are normal and naturally occurring. And, and not just that, they are the reason as a, as a human species, we have the advancements, privileges, um, uh, you, you know, of, of living in a society where we have access to things, conveniences like education for, for every child and and the healthcare system we have and, and transportation and all those those components of modern society it's because of those differences that we have these things so it's something to be celebrated and if uh, we believe that then our communities and our teams should plan prepare and expect to have these differences uh, and and it most importantly if if your teams or communities feel that these differences aren't um, widely acknowledged or, or included you should feel incomplete and, and so uh, as we as we talk about that, neurodiversity is definitely um, you know, focused on the the neurodivergent and neurotypical. So neurodivergent individuals like Mel and I have neurological conditions like autism, ADHD, um, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder, many mental health conditions, and the list goes on. And the neurotypical are people without those conditions. But neurodiversity is all of us in our big human family. And it's really important that when you hear neurodiversity, you don't think other. You don't think, oh, it's someone like Mel or someone like John. You think it's me because neurodiversity is all of us. And and from a from a company that, that truly believes in neurodiversity, Mel, we could not be happier to have you on our team. You, you make us better. You make us stronger. We truly appreciate everything you bring to the team. And it was a true pleasure meeting you, Mel Mooney. <laughs> Thank you, John. Likewise. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye.